in this video, we're going to be looking at distance versus displacement. And this forms part of a section called motion in one dimension. I love this example because it really shows the difference between distance and displacement. Now, first of all, just remember that distance is a scalar quantity. That means that it only needs a magnitude. It doesn't need a direction. So saying something like every morning from my house to school, I walk 20 kilometers. Okay, that sounds a bit ridiculous, but you know what I mean. 20 kilometers represents distance. Displacement, however, would be that from my home to school is 20 kilometers east. Notice how with displacement, I'm including a direction. And that's because displacement is a vector. And vectors don't only need a magnitude, which is the size or the amount, but they also need a direction. Now let's take a look at this picture to further understand the differences between displacement and distance. Distance is essentially the total path length traveled. So let's pretend you're on a walk and you decide to walk along around the perimeter of a park. You start at position A, you walk all the way around this little dotted purple line and you end up at position B. Let's say that you were wearing a watch that tracked your steps and tracked your distance and the watch told you that you traveled a distance of five kilometers. This is what we call your distance. It's the total path length traveled. Displacement, on the other hand, is something very different. Displacement is the difference in position in space. So what that means is it takes your final position, which is B, and your starting position, and that dotted line over there between your start and your final, that is your displacement. So it's kind of like instead of walking all the way around along the dotted purple line, you could have just gone from A to B along this green dotted line. That's your displacement. It's a vector quantity and it points from your initial to your final position. So that is your displacement over there, that little arrow. And we could work that out and say, for example, it's one kilometer. But now remember what we said, displacement is a vector, which means it needs a direction. We can give this a very rough direction if we think of the coordinate or the compass points, north, east, south, west. Take a look at how this arrow is pointing. It's pointing down and to the right, down and to the right, or in other words, southeast. So a very, very rough direction would be one kilometer southeast. We can work out a way more accurate direction using an angle if we use a triangle. So for example, if I knew this angle over here, I could work it out and I could say, oh, it is 43 degrees south of east. But we'll get to that at a later stage. Just for now, I want you to recognize the difference between distance and displacement. So we can get a very different magnitude, a very different amount. This one being five kilometers, this one being one kilometer, but they both give me an idea of how he moved, how this person moved. So here's a very nice comparison. Distance is a scalar quantity. You don't need direction. Displacement is a vector, needs direction. There's the definitions of both. As I mentioned previously, distance is the total path length traveled. So all the little distances added together. Displacement, however, is the difference in position in space. It's the change in position. And that's what this indicates over here, this triangle X or delta X. The triangle means change. And when we speak about X, that refers to the position. So change in position is displacement. And we take our final position, that's this one over here, minus our initial position. So if we look at the scenario, we've got our starting position over here, we've got our finishing position over here, our end position. If I consider going from the start to the finish, I can represent my distance as well as my displacement. Your distance is the total path length traveled. That would just be 15 meters. But your displacement is your change in your position. So your final position minus your initial position. So if we have a little line like this, and let's say our reference position is our start position. Let's say that's at zero. And let's say that's five. And let's say that's 10. And let's say this is 15. Our change in position, our displacement is your final position minus your initial position. 
Your final is 15. Your initial is 0. Therefore, your displacement is 15 meters. But remember, displacement needs a direction. So relative to our start position. So if we look here, we ended up moving that way. So we ended up moving 15 meters to the right. And that's the difference in this case between distance and displacement. There we go. Let's compare this to a scenario like this, where I start and I finish at the same point. Now, take note how I've represented kind of the halfway mark with another star, but this is not my end point. This is not my finish point. So I'm going to say yeah, it's not the end. So we started over here. This is our zero reference. So reference point is basically where you are considering or where you're starting from. So if I move this way, we can say that's moving in the positive direction. If I move this way, you can say you're moving in the negative direction, but we'll get more into that at a later stage. But our starting position is over here. We walk 15 meters this way. Then we stop, turn around and walk 15 meters back. Now take note, the distance is the total path length traveled. So we went 15 meters this way and we went 15 meters back. So in total, we went 30 meters. That's your distance. Your displacement, however, is your change in position. Remember, displacement is your change in position. It only considers two points in the motion, not this middle business over here. So it, con it considers where you started and it compares that to where you finished. So because you started over here and you finished over here, your position did not change. You finished where you started. Therefore, your change in position or your displacement is zero meters. So there we go. Because I have a zero magnitude over here, we don't have to give a direction. So zero meters. There's no direction. You didn't move according to your displacement. See if you can fill this one out. If we start over here at position number one, we move 15 meters over here to position number two, and then we carry on for another 30 meters to position number three. So it says, if I walk from one to three, what's my distance? What's my displacement? See if you can do it. Well, if you walk from one to three, you've walked 15 plus 30 meters. That's 45 meters. Remember, for distance, you don't need a direction. So it's just 45 meters. For displacement, it's 45 meters to the right or in the positive direction or east. Let's take a look at another one. What happens if I walk from one all the way to three, then back to two, and I stop at two? What is my distance and what is my displacement? So you're going from one to three, then back to two. So just to give you a hint, you start here, you finish here. See if you can do it. Right, so if you walk from one to three, then back to two, your distance is this, 15 plus 30, and then remember, you're going back to two. So from three back to two, this distance over here is another 30 meters. So your distance is therefore 15 plus 30 plus 30. That is 75 meters. Remember, distance doesn't need a direction. Displacement, however, is different. Let's look at displacement. Remember, displacement is your change in position. So it only considers where you start and where you end. Now you started at position number two. Look at the question. I walk from one to three, then back to two. So you start at position one and you end at star number two. So you start over here, you end over here. So it's the change from where you start to where you end. So remember the definition, it's a vector quantity that points from your initial position to your final position. It ignores everything else. I know you did it, but it ignores it. Because remember, to go from two to three, you went there, 30 meters that way, and then you went 30 meters that way. So it's basically like these 30 meters over here cancel each other out in terms of displacement. So your displacement is from where you started at position number one, and it's a vector quantity that points towards your final position. So therefore your displacement is 15 meters to the right. You can also look at it in terms of something like this. So if we take our zero position or our reference position as position number one. So if I have to use a line over here representing my starting position as my zero position, my reference position, and then over here position number two is 15 meters to the right relative to my zero position or my reference position, and position number three 
is 45 meters relative to my starting position. Remember, it's 30 meters between 15 and 45 here. So from posi between position number two, which is over here, and position number three over here, it's 30 meters. So if this is 15, this over here is 45. Okay, so if I walk from one to three, then back to two, this is where I started at the zero mark, essentially. This is where I ended at 15. So your change in position, delta x, change in position, is your final position, which is 15 over there, minus your initial position, which is zero. 15 meters to the right. So we take to the right as positive. In this example, they want us to calculate the displacement of a person moving from x1, position 1, to x2, position 2. So here we can see that we've indicated this as our zero or reference point, our reference position, and therefore our first position over here is indicated as being 50 meters to the right from our reference position. Position number 2 is 20 meters to the right relative to our initial position. They're 30 meters away from each other. So we're moving from position number one towards position number two. So immediately I can see that we're moving 30 meters to the left. So our displacement is 30 meters to the left. How we could actually calculate that is using our change in position, our final position minus our initial position. Remember, x1 is actually our initial position. x2 is actually our final position. They tell you, you start at 1, so that's initial. You end at 2, so that's our final. So our final is over here. It is 20. There's our final. Minus our initial, which is 50. And I'm getting a negative. Negative 30 meters. But in this context, remember the negative just means that you are moving left. So you rewrite your answer as a positive and you write that you are moving to the left. To, to the right is our positive direction because you can see as you are moving to the right here, the numbers are getting bigger and bigger, more and more positive. So to the right was our positive direction. Therefore, getting a negative answer makes sense because the person is moving to the left. In part two of distance versus displacement, we're going to be looking at more examples like this in one dimension like this, as well as dealing with situations like this. See you in the next video.